Hi everybody, it's Clive, it's another brew day. Today I'm going to have a go at making a batch of Guinness. It's all lined up, the boil is on, I'm just waiting for it to cool down to 80 and let the fun begin. Hi guys, uh, ordinarily you don't get to see me in the videos but today is going to be different. I've got my friend Ian Dickinson here, Ian's helping me. I'm showing Ian how, to, how I do the brewing so he's very kindly offered to do the filming as well. So I've, the, the boiler is ready, it's down to 80 degrees C. Now what I do now is I add nine litres of this boiled and cooled water to the mash tun. So, okay, so I'm gonna add the, the malt to the mash tun. I've just added the three kilograms of pale malt, okay. Now I've also got to add uh, 461 grams of, ro of, the, of the flaked barley, same of the roasted barley. I've also got to add uh, 276 grams of crystal malt and same of rolled oats and then later on in the, in the boil stage you'll be adding 38 grams of the hops okay so what I do I'll just show you the first one of these I'll take my trusty kitchen scales and I'll get 461 grams it's gonna be pretty much the whole bag because this is a 500 500 gram bag so I'm not gonna end up with much left that's it so, and then we just simply just add it to the, the mash tun. And then, importantly, we give it a good stir just to make sure that the, the, the water is in contact with every surface of the grain, because if we don't, it won't dissolve the sugar out of the grain. Right, all the malt is in the mash tun. I need to seal it up now and leave it for an hour and a half to let it steep and let all of the sugar be dissolved from the malt and then we'll, we'll sparge that later. So, let me just seal it up now. Since the last time, I've created this special cover. There we go. I wonder where, I wonder where my other bucket was. <laughs> so, this thing, the idea is, these things are pretty are insulated, but they're not 100% insulated. So I've created this thing out of an old um, needle, needle mat thing. So I'll add that on the top now, and we'll leave this now for an hour and a half, just to let it steep. Here we go, this is the yeast, this is Nottingham yeast, this is a quite a commonly used one, it's made by a company called Danstar, There's about a couple of quid a packet. Now, I, you don't just add this straight to the beer, we've got to hydrate it first, and what I normally do, I get some water, so I've got some boiled water here, now I need to cool this down to 30, 30 degrees C, now you, you need to have 110 mils, so this is a 100 mil measuring cylinder, so that's slightly over. That's about 100, 110 mils, and I'll add this. So this will act at sterilising the, the, the container at the same time. So I need to cool that down to, to less than 30. And I've got my thermometer here. And obviously that you need to make sure that your thermometer sterilises as well. So of course, remembering that this yeast is going to be going into the your beer after the boiling stage. It's important that everything is sterilised. So I'll add this when this is cooled down. Okay folks, time to reveal the mash tun. Let's take off the cover. Right, now if you get in here closely and you can see, you can get to smell. This, this is one of my favourite stages. Here we go, have a look at that. Oh, mm. Have a sniff of that, that's... Very nice. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah, I know, it is really, it is really nice, yeah, so... Uh, where's my spoon? But yeah, that's, that's had an hour and a half and all the sugars would now be in there. Now, what I normally do... Oh, here we go, yeah, here we go, thanks, Ian, yeah. Yeah, so that's all nice and all nice and sort of like soaked up in there. So what I normally do is, um, I've got the, basically I've boiled up the, the boiler full of water again. I'm letting this cool down. It's nearly down to less than 80 degrees C and all of this will be sparged, so it basically sprinkled through here over the surface of the grain. But before I do that, I normally just run off a little bit of this, a little bit of this, you'll see, here we go. Just how, how sort of like, um, not dirty, but it's full of fines basically. If you look really carefully, you can see all the bits coming out of it. That's in fact, that's full of bits. Look at that. So, you don't want those in your beer really. So, what I'll do is I'll, if I just turn that off a minute and I'll show you basically, and I've said this in all my videos, basically, I just pour this back across the surface of the grain. And ideally, this grain acts like a filter bed and it'll capture all those particles. And hopefully, they won't, they won't, they'll, they'll, be, they'll stay in there. 
and they won't come out. So I'll, I'll just do, I'll run this because we added about nine litres of water in that into here. We won't get all nine litres out because it will be it will be soaked into the grain. But we'll get out as much as we possibly can. So it's already looking a bit clearer. So that's looking that is looking a bit more like Guinness. <laughs> Not brewed Guinness, obviously, just but just malt extract. There we go. That'll do. I'll just stick that over the top again. Go in here. Okay, now this water is less than 80 degrees C. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to pass it through this hose, through this fine rose here, and we get a jet of water, and I'm going to wash it carefully over the surface of the beer. So, here we go, you can see that. Basically, the idea is to wash all of the sugar from the grain through the beer. Now, ideally, you shouldn't let this surface go, go dry, so I'll turn on the tap, I'm going to drain... This, take, this can take a little while, this might take about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And we'll end up with about 25 litres, maybe more. Um, and this will go back in the boiler. Um, and I might need a second container actually. Um, I've got one up here, so... Okay everyone, all of the water from the boiler has gone through here for the mash tun. I've got two containers. This is the first one I've filled up. So this one has got all the sort of concentrated sugar and the extract. This one you can see is still draining out from the container. This is the sort of like the weaker solution. So this one I'm gonna add into the boiler here. Okay, so it's a bit too heavy to do in one go. So I'll just ladle it in and then I'll tip it in at the top. It's looking a little bit full of fines, but hopefully they'll stay in the boiler at the end. So uh, cheers. Okay, at this stage, the extract's in about the mid-50s, so, yep, there we go. Typical at this stage, about 56. This is going to go back in the boiler, so it's not totally cooled down, so it uh, shouldn't take as long to reach 100 again. Okay, the malt extract has been in the boiler now, and it's just about reaching 100 degrees C, and if you look, you can hear, we had a couple of problems, a couple of hiccups with the boiler. It's cut out a couple of times. There's been quite a lot of fines in this particular batch. And you ordinarily when this happens, it's because sugar's coated the, the element surface. So I've had to totally empty it out and clean it out. But uh, it seems to be holding together at the moment. So this is the stage at which we can add the, um, add the hop. So let me just double check the temperature. Now, it was this one was only reading about 90 eight before, it's getting there, 97, hang on, no it's not reading it, hang on, let's get the other thermometer, if you don't believe one, get the other one, here we go, this one's a bit, this one's probably at temperature now, <laughs> yeah, so we go, five, six, 98, There we go, that's 100, that'll do for me. So, this is where we add the hops to the Goldings. Now, uh, these normally come vacuum packed. So, hops are normally uh, grown on bushes and they come as cones and these have been dried and compressed. And we need 38 grams of this hop, so let me just weigh out 38 grams of this hop. And actually, it's a very lightweight material, so 38 grams, it might, not, it might look like a large volume, but it's a very lightweight stuff, basically. There we go, I don't think we need all of that. There we go, go check ground. So we just add that into the top of the beer. And I'll just use my trusty thermometer just to give it a bit of a stir into the beer. And this will separate out into all the individual sort of cone petals. And you can already smell, Ian, you can, you can already mm. smell the, the hops in the beer. 
Oh, this is my favourite stage this stage, the hot boil. So our what was originally our sweet wort, which is basically the sugary extract, this is where it's converted into bitter wort, where we get we're putting in the, the bitterness as well as the aroma and the flavour from the hops. Look at that. Fantastic. Okay folks, uh, the boil has had an hour and a half. I've just popped in the copper chiller about 10 minutes ago. Now remember this is a coil and we've got water going in at the bottom of the coil and it whizzes its way around and acts like a heat exchanger. That takes out the heat. So I'll turn this off now and I'll go and turn on You can see the steam. Hang on, where's the water? You can see the steam coming out of this already. It's really effective. Look at that. You can feel the pipe's quite warm. So that's, that's doing the job. Uh, that temperature should come down pretty quickly now. Yeah, feel that in. Yeah, it's doing a good job, isn't it? Okay folks, this is now called to less than 30 degrees C. I am now going to transfer this into primary fermentation. Whoops. There we go. See why I see why I should have had that filter in there in. Because you're getting all sorts of hot flowers in there now. Oh. Exactly, yeah. I know, that's what I just thought. There's not a lot I could do about it. <laughs> the only thing I can do is, is empty it all out and chill it back in here. <laughs> this is the unorthodox way of, of taking the beer out of the... You when you forget to put it back on the inside. Don't do this at home, folks. <laughs> this fish should be on the inside of there, but I forgot to add it to reattach it. Okay, I put the, um, the cooled bitter wort into the primary fermentation bin and uh, pitched the yeast, uh, the hydrated yeast. And this has been sitting here now for seven days and this is now ready. All the uh, first fermentation has been completed and this is now ready to be transferred into the pressure barrel and also into some bottles. Now ready to be transferred from here into the pressure barrel. Okay, we're ready to reveal what we've got inside the primary fermentation bin. So we need to make we need to take off the lid of the primary fermenter. Uh, just be a little bit careful at this stage because uh, when I first did this, I managed to break the seal of the lid here. Hence a little bit of uh, gaffer tape on here. There we go. And again, I'm happy not going to do the same thing. Off you come. There we go. Look at that. Oh. Multi goodness. Right, here we go. I've got my trusty siphon, which is just literally well, as it looks plastic pipe uh, here and a tube. And this at the end, this basically is fits over the end and that stops any sediment being sucked up the end of the tube. So basically, the fluid rather than going straight up the tube has to go down than up, and that stops any of the nasty sediment getting into your beer or, or a lot of the sediment. So this will now go into here and basically I'll literally just push it very carefully down the side and some of you didn't like this particular bit but uh, life's too short really to get myself a pump so here we go and that's it now that will basically take about 10-15 minutes for the beer to be siphoned from in here into here and what I'll do then is I'll add the uh, sugar and I'll add the, uh, the finings to make sure they get a nice clear beer. So before I uh, siphon all of this beer into the pressure barrel, I'm going to add the priming sugar. Now, what I've got here is I've got 71 grams or two and a half ounces of priming sugar. Now, previously I've used granulated sugar and I always thought that was okay, but uh, I read recently in, in one of the books that I'm, I'm keen on reading about brewing that uh, granulated sugar can make your beer taste a bit thin. Well, I don't want my beer tasting thin, I want a nice fat beer. So I'm basically going to try this stuff, 
And basically this is, uh, what do they, this stuff here, I just bought this from, from Wilkinson's, it was a £2.50 a kilogram of brewing sugar. It says here it's dextrose monohydrate, so who knows. Anyway, it's a lot finer than granulated sugar, so basically what I'll do is I'll run a bit of the beer that I've already transferred into here and I'll dissolve the sugar. Hello? I'll dissolve the sugar in the beer and then add it back into the barrel. That way, hopefully, it will all uh, react much quicker with the beer. Here we go, nice, nice sugary solution. Then I just tip it in the top of the beer here. So there's a little bit less, so I'll add a little bit more. A little bit more. So give that a nice swirl around so it's all dissolved. Here we go. So, that's the primary sugar added. Next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to add the beer findings. Now, this is in an attempt to try and make your beer nice and clear. Here we go, if you can see that. Basically, I'm going to add this entire content of the sachet in here. Now, I've even, paranoid as I am about cleaning everything, I've even sterilised the scissors that I'm going to use to cut and open this pack. So, we'll just snip the top of the pack off and then just tip it into the container. Try and get it all in. It's quite gloopy looking stuff actually. There we go. There we go. Okay. Looking pretty good. We've got up to, up to about here in terms of the pressure barrel. Let me just pop the lid on. Just to make sure nothing floats in the top there. And you can see here what you've got, some really nice gunky looking stuff in there. So I need to wash all that out, but you didn't want any of that in your beer, so I'll get rid of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to transfer some of this beer into bottles. I'm going to add a small amount of my brewing sugar into these bottles, I'll probably add about a tip of a teaspoon into these. now. Each of these bottles has been sitting uh, with, with, with a sterilising solution. I use Milton's. This is the baby stuff. Yes, it's cheaper than the sort of like stuff they get in the brewing shop and it works just as well. So that's got a, a solution. I need to uh, swirl these out, rinse them out properly so they're nice and clean for the beer to go in. So you'll see as I, as I go along what I'm up to. Okay, so you've got your pressure barrel full of beer, it's primed with sugar, it's got the findings. I could leave this now sealed up nice and tight and in three weeks time I'd have a barrel of beer. Great. Now, once you start drinking it, air gets into it and after about three or four days, unless you're really careful and keep it topped up with CO2, after about three or four days it's going to start to turn. So unless you're a really big beer drinker or you can have a party, which is a good idea, what I recommend is that some of your beer you put into bottles, okay? Now, you, this is the secondary fermentation stage. You can also brew that second stage in bottles, and that's called bottle conditioning. So the beer is brewed in the bottle. So what I normally do is I take a bottle, it's been sterilised, and I get my brewing sugar, now, and I put a tip of a teaspoon of brewing sugar into the bottle. Now there's already put sugar in here, but I just think there's no harm to put a little bit of extra just to give it that little bit of an extra kick. And then I'll literally just take a jug and fill it with beer. And then I just top up the bottle with beer. And repeat 12 times. Now, one thing I've learned recently is that uh, however tempted you may be, don't fill your bottle right up to the top. You need to leave a bit of space. And that space is the headroom or the ullage, U-double-L-A-G-E. 
Now the reason is you need to have a little bit of a gap there to allow the beer to carbonate properly. Not quite entirely sure how it works, but fair enough, basically that little indentation there, that gives you a three centimetre space at the top. Now, where I learned this was from, <coughs> this new book I bought a little while ago that I'm working my way through, it's called Brewing Britain, The Quest for the Perfect Point by Andy Hamilton. Fantastic book, extremely well written, and basically what Andy says, remember to leave a gap of around three centimetres, one inch, in the neck of your beer bottle. This airspace is called the Ullage and is needed so the beer can carbonate correctly. There you go, see I wasn't telling you a fib. So, I highly recommended that book, it cost me about seven quid from Amazon, so very Now, I know what else you're thinking. What on earth are you doing using green bottles? You're supposed to use brown bottles apparently for bottle conditioning beer. Well, I like these bottles. I keep my bottles in a dark cupboard. They're not exposed to sunlight because that's the problem basically. The ultraviolet light will cause the beer to go a bit funny. If it's in a brown bottle apparently that doesn't happen. But as I keep my beer bottles tucked away in a very dark cupboard, I don't have that problem. So my beer is usually fine. So. One thing I would encourage you to do is uh, have a bit of a taste. No harm in, 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 in doing that. Ultimately, you're going to be drinking the stuff. This is a little bit leftover, so don't worry, it's not going to go anywhere else except in my mouth. Let's have a taste. Yeah, that's pretty tasting very much like a, a stout, which is basically what this is meant to be. It's nice and bitter, it's got a slight coffee taste to it. It's, uh, obviously, no alcohol, not much alcohol at this stage anyway, so there'll be it's only part, only half brewed. So, yeah, tasting pretty good. So, hopefully, three weeks' time, I'll be finished. Now, we've got all my bottles are um, bottled up. I've got uh, about two thirds of a barrel here, so this will be ready for a get together about three weeks' time, and hopefully, you guys will have a go as well. Okay, happy brewing.